The world around you will tell you, where is your God? He's not going to help you. How come you're struggling? See, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't love you. He's not even real. Welcome back to Refresh, a Summer in Psalms devotional. As we're working our way through the book of Psalms every weekday between June, July, and August. My name is Aaron Bublitz. I serve as pastor at Heritage Lutheran Church, and it's my honor and privilege to spend a little bit of time with you in God's Word as we work together through this book of Psalms. We have reached Psalm 11. It's another Psalm of David. And the setting here is his enemies are telling him, your God can't help you. Where is he? Just give up. But yet we see where David places his trust, that all believers can place their trust in a God who does love them, care for them, and protect them. This is Psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. So it seems that David's enemies are taunting him. He says, in the Lord, I take refuge. How can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? And then he describes in this vivid picture how they're bending their bows. They're ready to shoot arrows at him. They're shooting from the shadows to the upright in heart. And maybe you know how that feels, right? As a believer, you take refuge in the Lord. And what do you hear? You hear those around you, you hear unbelievers, you hear the sinful world, you hear maybe the voice of the devil there too, tempting you, saying, God can't help you. They're aiming their arrows at you, they're from the shadows. Flee like a bird, just give up. And David cries out, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? It seems like everything is falling around Uh, falling down around me. You look at the state of this world and it just looks like a big mess and that there's no one in control. Maybe at the state of your life and wonder what's going on. The foundations seem like they're just being destroyed. What can the righteous do? Maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Maybe the unbelieving world, maybe Satan is right that God's not there. God's not listening. Just flee. Give up. But then he turns in faith. He says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. And the Lord is observing all things. Nothing gets past him. There's nothing that goes on in this world or in your life that the Lord does not know about. He says he observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. He's watching. He's listening. He hears the taunts of the wicked. He hears the sinful world around us and what and sees what they're doing to us. But he also, it says, he examines the righteous. He sees us. He sees believers. He sees those who are clothed in the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. He examines. He sees what we're going through. And he examines and sees what the wicked are doing too. And that does not escape his view. And, will not, and they will not escape his judgment. It describes in very vivid terms here what the end is for those who have rejected him, for those who taunt his people, for those who claim he's not real and not there. It says that those who love violence, the wicked, he hates them with a passion. We heard this a couple of Psalms ago, didn't we? We, we don't like to think of this side of God maybe, but, but God doesn't just hate wickedness. He hates those who do wicked because they're opposed to him. And what is he going to do? He will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur on them, and a scorching wind will be their lot. Now, maybe they don't experience that in this life. You look at the the lives of unbelievers in this world, and and many of them look pretty good. Many of their lives look maybe even better than uh, uh, believers' lives. They've, They've... They've got many blessings that they enjoy, but all of those blessings in this life are, are still God longing for them to know him and look to him and, and trust in him and, and, and believe in him, that he still provides these things in their time of grace. But there will come a time 
if they remain in their impenitence, if they remain in their denial of the true God, that the wicked will be punished. And here's a, just a graphic description of hell. Raining fiery coals and burning sulfur on them, a f scorching wind will be their lot for eternity. Because the Lord is righteous and he loves righteousness and justice. And who will see his face? Who will get to be with him? Who will know finally and fully that he is real and that he is there and that we will always get to be with him in his presence? The upright will see his face. Just think about that, dear Christian. You who struggle, you who are faced with these temptations and, and, and these, these uh, lies of the sinful world and of the devil that your God is not real, he's not there to help you. Just give up. The upright will see his face. You will get to see his face in heaven. You who are upright through faith. You who are upright because you trust in the merits of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And what's so awesome is you get to see his face right now. Maybe not, not visibly because there's this separation between us and God because you know, we're, we're still in our sinful state. But we see his face in the gospel. We get to look into the face of God himself suffering and dying on a cross for us. We get to look into the face of the Son of God himself as we see him walking out of a tomb and proclaiming victory for us. We get to see his face in the gospel, in the word, in the sacrament. We get to see the face of God. We get to see his love for us, his compassion for us, his mercy towards us as we go through struggles in this life. And we can denounce our enemies and say no. There's no reason for us to flee. There's no reason for us to give up. You can aim your flaming arrows at us all you want from the shadows. Our God is our refuge. Our Lord is overseeing his righteous ones, us, through this life and into our eternal life when we will get to see his face forever. God be praised for that. Let's pray. Oh, Lord. As we go through this life, uh, it, it might be easy for us to doubt if you are there, if you are going to help us, uh, uh, that we should just run and, and flee. Uh, the sinful world around us and the devil, they want us to, they're, they're shooting their arrows at us and wanting us to doubt you and your word and your promises. But we know that you are a refuge. We know that we get to see your face. We know get, we get to experience your love and your forgiveness and your compassion as you come to us in word and sacrament. And one day, we will get to see your face in eternity and know without a doubt, with any, any more doubts or, or questions that you are real, that you are there, that you are here with us right now, but we will get to be with you forever. We thank and praise you for those promises you make to us in your word as we go through this life to strengthen us and give us that hope for our eternal life with you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wonderful, again, to be with you here and, and work together with this through this psalm with you. Again, if, if you um, are enjoying these resources, please share them with somebody else. Share them on your social media. Text a, text a link to a friend if you're using a YouTube videos or the podcasts. Uh, we'd love to be able to reach more people and share this refreshment that we can find in the Word of God alone. Friends, be with you until we get to meet again. Bye-bye. <laughs>